Thinking back to when we didn't have the custom shop, we had artist relations going on as best as we could. But honestly, it was an issue for us to be in Buena Park, an hour and a half each way from, from Hollywood, depending on traffic. When I received, after it's got to be five years of trying to get permission to open up a custom shop, it finally got approved, and I knew instantly it had to be on Weddington Street. I had grown up in the San Fernando Valley, and Weddington Street was popular when I was 15, 16, 17 years old when I was playing, and I was rehearsing on Weddington Street. And just about everybody who's successful in the business that did come to California or grew up in California, if they hadn't worked on Weddington Street, they were not successful. And then also the ability to work with the studios and the cartage houses that were there and rehearsal space, there was so much to draw from. Working with artists in, on Weddington Street in North Hollywood allowed us to have relationships with new artists, constantly new artists coming in. Some of them already had Yamaha guitars, some of them wanted to check out Yamaha guitars, and we would be sharing the evaluations of the things that we were working on, whether it be modifications, custom guitars, or stock guitars. We would be sharing that with the mothership in Japan. We did the prototyping, and Japan did the engineering. Nathan East bases, he had been playing guitars that he was exposed to when he was going into Japan. So his first contact with Yamaha was with the Japanese artist relations people and he's been with Yamaha for well, almost 40 years. I was at a and Records watching a session with Lee Rittenauer and Dave Grusin and Abe Laboriel, and I'm going, the bass sounds amazing. Their first break, he came out and said, Abe, what bass is this? You know, and he says, this is my, my Yamaha. And I said, well, how, how do I get to try one? And Lee and I were gonna go to Japan like the next month or something. And he said, here, here's the guy uh, you call. His name's Hoggy. And tell him I sent you. And so Hoggy, we were playing at a place called the Pit Inn over there in Rapungi. And Hoggy put my first, it was beautiful, wine color, sunburst uh, BB-1000 in my hands. And, and I played it. And the first thing I said to him, Hoggy, I got to take this home with you. You're not going home with this. And he, he, uh, he gifted it to me. And that was the beginning of, you know, at least now four decades of playing Yamaha basses. My primary recording bass, I think the official name of it is the Motion LB. And first of all, it never leaves my sight. Nobody else handles it. It's just a very special instrument for whatever reason, that one piece of wood has just been responsible for a lot of what I've played on in my career. It's on three or four Grammy record of the years. And it's really nice to know that I can go into a studio and always get a great sound. And, and some of the top engineers, Al Schmidt and Don Murray and, and top producers, Tommy LaPoma, have recorded this bass. And everyone has said how much they like and admire it. When I was recording with the Bee Gees in London, Morris Gibb, he said, how much do you take for this bass, you know? And, and then I used it on all the Babyface sessions. He started offering me, and the offer just kept going up and up and up. And I think I, at about a quarter million, I said, no, I'm not going to sell it for any price. The Yamaha DNA in what I do goes very deep. I was playing tears in heaven in the studio, and, and I always say the song played me. And to have an instrument that would really sing and um, express that sentiment was very special. Footloose, I remember recording that and, and then playing it all over the world. And it's always a, a great surprise when a song you play on wins song of the year. Playing the Grammys with, most recently with Pharrell, Nile Rodgers, Stevie Wonder, and, and Daft Punk. We played Get Lucky at the Grammys and there's Paul McCartney out there, and Ringo, and Beyonce, Katy Perry, and they're all out there dancing to it. And again, to have an instrument that I can rely on so much. Because, you know, you get some of these calls, okay, uh, Quincy Jones wants you for Michael Jackson. It's like, wait, a billion people are gonna hear this record, you know? And, and so you're in there, and to know that I have the best representation has been it, you know, and, and regardless of who calls, you know. Ringo, Clapton, you know, all, all these guys. I put that bass over my shoulder and go in there and say, okay, let's see if we can get her done. The magic with Nathan is that he is such a gentleman 
And the way that he conducts himself, he walks into a room and the whole room just changes. He's just one of those people. And so easy to work with and so honest and so humble and so amazing. And that combination is very rare. And I love working with him. And we've become really great friends. Oh, Ken DePron and I go back, I mean, I forget who was president <laughs> back then, but we go back at least four decades. And he was in the process of putting the custom guitar shops together. The first one was on Weddington, right there in the middle of the valley where Leeds music was right down the street where we always used to rehearse. Ken was great because he always worked on my basses anyway, so whenever I had something that needed to be tweaked or needed a fret job, Ken was my guy. If there's a company that really, I feel like, family is, 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 is Yamaha. And of course, the company is always evolving and, and trying to make every instrument that comes better. That's one thing that's amazed me over the 40 years is that every instrument that I've received has been just a little better than the one before, which is an amazing standard to live by. Mm -hmm.